First family, I'm glad you're with us tonight online. We're here to uh, just worship together through this medium. And we're going to sing a little bit, hear from the word a little bit, and still worship the Lord together tonight through this. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us For our use thy folds prepare Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus You brought us thine we are Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus Thou hast brought us thine, we are. We are thine, do thou befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend us. Seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. Hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. Hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Thou hast promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Early let us turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. Good evening, First Baptist Church. So glad to have you worshiping with us tonight for our weekly midweek worship service. This is something that we do each and every Wednesday night. I lead a midweek prayer service that meets right here in our sanctuary. And I know that many of you may be used to meeting with different groups. We have a variety of studies that happen on Wednesday nights. One of the things that I'm grateful for is that we still have the opportunity to gather together, even through the situation that we find ourselves in, to worship, to study the word together, to pray together. And we're going to do all of those things in the time that we have together tonight. You know, a lot could be said about the obstacles that we're all facing right now. Uh, the, the various frustrations that we might have about the ways that our lives have been affected by the current situation with the novel coronavirus and COVID-19 and, and the whole host of ways that that has affected our, our, our society, our culture. But tonight, I, I want to choose, rather than focusing on some of the frustrations I want to choose to focus on the opportunities that have presented themselves in the midst of this situation. This past Sunday, as we gathered online for worship together, 
we had over 1,800 unique views of our service. Now, before we get too excited about that, that doesn't mean that 1,800 people watched our service from beginning to end. Uh, in fact, uh, less than half of those engaged for more than a matter of a few minutes. But here's what this means, really. This is the way that we're choosing to see this in the midst of this moment. We have perhaps a, a potentially much greater reach in this time than we might normally have. We might have the opportunity to engage with people through the current events that we find ourselves faced with that we would never otherwise get to engage with. And perhaps tonight I'm speaking to you even. Maybe you're someone who's watching this study tonight, who's, who's been able to participate with our church during this season. And you normally aren't someone that, that joins us for worship. Let me say to you, first of all, welcome. We're glad you're here. We're, in fact, we're, we're really pleased that we're able to connect with you and minister to you in this time of crisis. And for whatever reason you may be joining us now, I pray that God will use tonight's study to stir your heart and to encourage you and to lead you deeper in your trust and your, and your relationship with the Lord. So let's dig in tonight. We're going to be looking at a passage of scripture in Psalm 139, verse 24 together. On Wednesday nights in the study that I lead right now, we're looking at a series of dangerous prayers. We're looking at prayers that are directed from the scripture. Many of them, though not exclusively, many of them are from the Psalms. And we are using these Psalms to guide the way that we pray, to guide us to pray essentially what the scripture says. And tonight will be no exception to that as we look at Psalm 139 verse 24 and ultimately turn this into a prayer that we might pray for God's wisdom and his direction in our lives. Recently, in, in, in the last few months, uh, our oldest son, Pike, began driving. It was about this time last year when we were doing driver's ed with Pike. We did the what's known as the parent-taught driver's ed. So essentially driver's ed from home with dad and mom. And we were going through the driver's ed program. And, and I remember that one of the things that we were talking with Pike about is learning that when you drive, you have blind spots. There are areas around your car that you can't see with your mirrors, that you can't see, particularly over your left and your your right shoulder. And it's a little bit of a harrowing experience for a parent to be riding in the car with their 15-year-old child who's learning how to drive and to tell them, yeah, for just a minute, I want you to take your eyes off the road and look over your shoulder and look back. And, and I remember the first time that Pike did that and he looked and he looked back and I'm thinking to myself, please don't let this thing get loose. You know, well, we're going down the road. He did great, by the way. He was a great driver, a quick learner and, and did fantastic with it. But the point is, nonetheless, he had to learn about his blind spots. We've all been there. We've all had to learn that when we drive, there are blind spots. Tonight in this scripture, really the focus is perhaps on some blind spots, on helping ourselves to pray and trust God's wisdom in his direction, trust the leadership of the Holy Spirit, that he might show us blind spots that we have in our obedience and our relationship with him. And so we read, in Psalm 139 in verse 24, read this with me. We, we read these words. See if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. See if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Tonight I want us to turn that scripture into a prayer that we might pray for our lives. When we think about a grievous way, what, what is a, a grievous way? Any grievous way in me? A grievous way really is, is any and everything that doesn't honor God. Ultimately, a grievous way is anything in our lives that isn't honoring to the Lord, that isn't honoring his lordship and his leadership. It's ultimately anything that isn't in our lives, anything that we do that isn't for his glory would be a grievous way. And, and the prayer that we find in the scripture is a prayer that God would I, help us to identify those things in our lives that aren't honoring to him, to help us to identify those things in our lives that, that don't give him glory, that we might bring those things under the submission of his lordship, his leadership for our hearts and our lives. And that's exactly what we want to pray. Let me, let, me ask, let me ask you a very particular question about connecting this scripture to our current situation. Because I've been, I've been thinking on this own question in, in my life and so I'd like to just pose it to you tonight. Could it be perhaps that God is using our current situation in life to show us our blind spots? 
Here's what I mean. Could it be that God is using this current situation to show us all the, the idols that we have, all the things in our lives that we trust in, all the things that we find pleasure in, all the things that we would look to and, and really give our lives to other than following his direction, his leadership for our lives? Everything is shut down right now. Everything in our lives, all the things that we look to for entertainment, all the things that we look to to fill our time, the things that we look to for pleasure, the things that we look to for a distraction, the things that we use to de-stress, all of those things, it seems, are shut down. Kids activities, sports, youth sports, school, uh, just the ability to go out and eat together at a restaurant and fellowship with, with one another. Just these simple luxuries that we have in life, the simple comforts. And that's what many of these are, the things that we enjoy. But could it be that the Lord is wanting to use this season in our lives to show us that we've placed all of our, our hopes, all of our desires in the wrong things? That's something I've been wrestling with in my own life. And I want to encourage you not tonight, maybe even to think, and, and particularly in light of this passage, to think of it along these lines. Are those blind spots? I don't think it's any mistake that through all of this, we're finding that it takes something that we can't even see, a virus that we can't even see with the human eye that, that has literally altered the course of our entire world, global economies, our schedules, our lives, our, uh, our, our, our hopes, our dreams, our plans for the future, all of these things held in sway by this virus and, and the potential effects of this virus in our lives. Now, I'm not saying that the Lord did that. I don't believe that at all. But I do think that even in the midst of this, God has a lesson for us and the Lord has allowed this to happen. And I wonder how does he want to use it in our lives? lives? Could it be that he wants to use our current situation to show us our blind spots? When we think about our lives and we think about living our lives for things that are ultimate, think living our lives for things that matter. And that's really the purpose of this verse, isn't it? Lead me in a way everlasting. When we think about the everlasting way, it's a, a, a thing that are of ultimate worth, ultimate significance. When we think about living our lives for things of ultimate worth and significance. I want to give us three simple things to, to look at in our lives so that we could ask ourselves, how do I live my life for ultimate things in the midst of a crisis situation? How do I live my life for ultimate things in the midst of unrest or uncertainty? Can I tell you that I think the first thing that we have to do is that we have to be still. We have to pause. We have to, we have to get alone with the Lord. If we're ever gonna know how God wants to use this in our lives, if we're ever gonna know how God wants to lead us and direct us through this, it begins with getting alone with God, being still before him and allowing him to speak. Let me encourage you that you would use some of the free time that you've suddenly found yourself with to spend time alone with the Lord, spend time studying his word, spend time in prayer, spend time reflecting on, meditating and thinking on God's plans and his purpose for your life in ways that he might wanna use you even in the midst of this situation. And as you get alone with God, I wanna encourage you, eliminate distractions. Try to find time away from everyone else, away from anything else that might distract you. Time when you can be alone with God. It's so easy in, in a time like this to fill that free time that we have with things that don't matter. It's so easy to just binge watch our way through all of this free time that we have. And I wanna encourage you that you wouldn't do that, that you wouldn't waste the gift of time that you've been given in the midst of this situation, but rather that you would say, Lord, use this time to strengthen me. Use this time to deepen me. Use this time to grow me. Lord, use this time to lead me in the way that's everlasting. It begins with being still. So I want to encourage you to be still. The second thing I want to encourage you to do, not only that you would be still, that you would be honest. As you get, as you get still, as you get alone with the Lord, that you would, you would be honest. Be honest with yourself. Be honest about those things that, that you look to for satisfaction, that those things that you look to for pleasure, those things that you look to for comfort, those things that you might look to instead of the Lord, the things that your hopes and dreams are wrapped up in that suddenly are unavailable. Be honest with yourself and, importantly, be honest with God about those things. 
You know, the truth is that in the midst of a a moment like this, where we've been given time, where we've been given the opportunity through the situation that we find ourselves in to be still, to be honest, sometimes it's painful, it's painful to be to be honest with ourselves. Sometimes it's painful to be real. Sometimes it it hurts to face the truth that is there plainly in front of us. But I want to encourage you that you would not miss the opportunity in this moment to be still and to be honest, to be honest with yourself and importantly, to be honest with God. Here's the simple truth that we all know. It lies under the surface, perhaps. We can lie to others and deceive them. We can lie to ourselves and deceive ourselves, but we cannot lie to God and deceive him. God is not deceived with all of the things that we do and all of the the fury of activity that we have that keeps us so busy and that keeps us from focusing on who we really are and how we really feel and and what's really going on inside of ourselves. And we we may even numb ourselves from that truth, but God is not deceived. Let me encourage you to be still, to get alone with the Lord. Let me, let me just back up. Let me encourage you to be still, to get alone with the Lord, to be honest, to confess to the Lord the things that come to the surface when you spend time with him and to be honest with yourself about what God is showing you, what he's revealing to you when you pray to him, when, when you ask him to see if there's any grievous way in you. So the way that we Focus on ultimate things in the midst of unrest. Be still, be honest. Third, let me encourage you to be teachable, to be leadable, that you would allow God to speak to you and speak to your heart and that you would allow his Holy Spirit to lead you. You know, when we pray this prayer, lead me in the way everlasting. I think it's important that we understand that the way that's everlasting is not a way that is natural to us. It's not a way that we find on our own, in fact, apart from God's leadership, apart from the leadership of his Holy Spirit in our lives. We'll just keep chasing after things that are fruitless and things that are, that are temporary. But by the direction of his Holy Spirit, he'll lead us in a way that's everlasting. He'll lead us down that path to honor him with our lives, with our thoughts, with our intention. In all things, we want to be teachable, leadable. You know, as I've thought about all that's going on in our midst right now, I've been praying regularly for our church. One of my prayers for First Baptist Church has been that God would allow us to connect and minister with people in our community, in our area, that perhaps we might not ever otherwise connect with. That through these circumstances, through these situations, that we might connect with people that we would never otherwise have the opportunity to connect with. And maybe tonight even, maybe that's you. Maybe you're one of those people who would say, you know, were it not for this current situation, I might not ever be listening. Maybe that's because you felt distant from God. Maybe it's because You've felt like you were living in a, a, a season of sin, a, a season where you had wandered away. Maybe it's because there's never been that moment in your life where you've truly trusted Jesus by faith and surrendered your heart and your life to him. Let me encourage you tonight. If, if you're one of those people who would say, you know, I don't know that I would be listening. I don't know that I would be reachable apart from this current situation. I think God has a plan for you even in this. And I'm so glad that you're joining us tonight. I'm so glad you're here and that you're listening. And my prayer for you is that God would use this season that we're all in to lead you in the way that's everlasting. Maybe tonight you know that 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 God is speaking. You know that he's working and and maybe you regularly spend time with him. Can I encourage you that even in this season, the Lord has a plan for you. Don't check out. Don't disengage. Don't be distracted by the abundance of free time or just the disruption of your normal routine and your normal schedule. Instead, draw near to the Lord in confidence and faith and say, God, what would you have me do? How would you lead me in this time? Would you be willing to pray that prayer? See if there's any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You know, tonight, 
We're going to pray that prayer. In fact, in, in just a moment together, we're going, to, we're going to pray this very prayer. We're going to allow these words of the scripture to direct our prayer. But before we do that, can I encourage you in this way, that if God is speaking to you tonight, if you sense his work in your heart, we want to connect with you. And so we've created a, a way that we can connect. One way is that you can simply just send us an email. You can email us at fbc at fbcchickasha.org. And if you do, then we'll be able to follow up with you and help you take those next steps along that journey of, of what it looks like to follow the Lord, to, to walk in the way that's everlasting. Or another way that you can connect with us, that you can let us know about the commitment that you want to make to the Lord is that you just go to our website, fbcchickasha.org slash commit. And there you'll find an online web form. You can just give us your information, fill out the details of that online web form, and we'll be able to follow up with you as well. So either way, email us, fbc at fbcchickasha.org. Go to our website, fbcchickasha.org slash commit. Fill out the web form that it brings up, and we'll be able to follow up with you and connect with you. Now, let's go together to the Lord tonight and let's pray this prayer that we see in the scripture. See if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way that's everlasting. Would you pray with me? God, this is our prayer tonight as we come before you. And we ask with confidence in, in, your, in your power, in your wisdom, in your, in your love for us, and your desire to lead us in a way that's everlasting. Lord, we ask that you would lead us down that path, lead us in that way. Lord, we pray, see if there be any grievous way in us. Lord, search our heart, try our thoughts, see if there's anything in us that isn't honoring and pleasing to you, Lord, that we might confess it, that we might repent of it, turn our hearts and our lives to you. And then Lord, we pray that you would lead us in the way everlasting. Lead us down that path of knowing you, of honoring you, of being fully yielded and surrendered to your work in our lives, Holy Spirit, that we, might, that we might walk in the way that's everlasting. And we pray that you would use even these circumstances that we find ourselves in, even these trying times, Lord, that you would use this in our lives to lead us closer to you and deeper in our trust of you through hard times. Lord, we love you. We pray for your direction. And it's in your name that we pray this, Jesus. Amen. Can I encourage you tonight that God is not finished in your life, that he has a work that he wants to do. And we want to walk with you as you journey down that road of, of following the Lord's leadership, following the leadership of his Holy Spirit. And so we want to connect. If God's speaking to you tonight, reach out to us, email us at fbc at fbcchickasha.org or log on to our website, fbcchickasha.org slash commit, fill out the web form so that we can follow up with you. We want to connect and help you as you're following God's direction, his path for your life. Let's close out our time together tonight with a, a song that we are gonna sing together. And even in this, we're, wanna, we're wanting the spirit of God to move in our midst, to move in our hearts. So where, wherever you're joining us from tonight, if you're on a mobile device, if you're gathered in the living room with your family, wherever you might be right now, we wanna encourage you that you would join us in singing this prayer. It's rooted in the Psalms as well as we lift our hearts to the Lord and we say, Lord, lead us. Shepherd, would you guide us every step of the way? Let's pray together, church, before we sing. Lord, again, we're praying, lead us, move in our hearts, move in our lives. We surrender to you, Jesus. We wanna walk with faith by you. And we pray that even now you would move in our hearts and lives as we sing. And we pray this in your name, amen. Let's sing together, church. is my shepherd and shall not want he makes me lie down in fields of green he leads me beside the water so still and I am restores my soul for he restores my soul oh my soul oh my soul
me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for he restores my soul, for he restores my soul, oh my soul. Oh, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You make a table in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. My cup overflows. Sure in goodness and mercy. Always chase and long after me, and I will dwell in your house, O oh God, for all of my days. For He restores my soul. Restores my soul, oh my soul. Amen. Good night, church family.